Here we go now with our good buddy, Buck Martinez. He, of course, uh, back in the booth with the Blue Jays. Very happy to see that. Continue their series in Baltimore tonight against the Orioles. And the Blue Jays are playing well. There he is. Buck looks good, feels good, so that's good to see. And, boy, this is a streaky team, Buck. I tell you, when they get it going, they can be dangerous. Bichette, of course, they can go the other way quick, too. It's kind of a weird team, but it's a dangerous team come postseason. Give me your thoughts on the Blue Jays right now. What do you see? They're playing real good ball right now, and they, they kind of hit rock bottom. They were swept by the Angels at Rogers Center, and then they won two or three against the Cubs before they went into Pittsburgh. But it's been kind of a roller coaster ride. But right now, they're playing their really good defense. Their bullpen has been great since the second half, and uh, you know their starters—they're capable of uh, cranking out a good game every single night. Last night, the doubleheader was a good example of that. And certainly now, the way Bo's heating up, it looks like uh, they're in a good spot here as they uh, get full stride in September. Uh, the biggest difference with the new manager, Buck, is what? I, I think he's really used the bullpen very well. I think the biggest thing is uh, the way he manipulated the bullpen. They pushed Stripling back from the Saturday start to Sunday. John Snyder did a terrific job of using the bullpen on Saturday, and they stepped up. They won that game in Pittsburgh, and that pushed Barrios and Gosman into the doubleheader last night in Baltimore. And Barrios has pitched very well against the Orioles. Gosman made his first start as a visitor back at Camden Yards, but it's, uh, he's done a great job with the bullpen, and he's kind of out of the box as that goes. He's used Jordan Romano in uh, some four-out saves, and uh, he knows that he's got to win these games down the stretch. So he's not uh, not playing a traditional lefty-righty matchup. He's going with his gut, and he's done a pretty good job. Uh, a lot of games with the Orioles, as you said, starts with that doubleheader yesterday. Plus, they're fighting for home field if they are so fortunate to feather off Baltimore because, obviously, that fourth seed gets the three games at home. Five and six does not. So that will be significant. Talk about home field for the Blue Jays at the end of the day if they have a chance to fight for that last seven, eight games of the season. Buck, what do you see? Yeah, Chris, you've seen what it's like in the postseason at Rogers Center. The fans are terrific. They really get on board. But actually, the Blue Jays have played much better on the road lately. But they certainly want the wild card series at home. You want to play all three of those games at home. And I think they understand the importance of winning that home field advantage in the postseason. I don't know that they're really uh, set on just the wild card. You know, this division is really going to be interesting the way everything is bunched up now with Tampa Bay, the Yankees, and the Blue Jays, and only five and a half games separate them, so it's pretty interesting. And I think that, uh, you know, the Blue Jays play the, the Orioles a lot. They play Tampa Bay nine more times, and there's going to be a lot of back and forth between those teams, but the Yankees are in the mix as well. So it's going to be kind of interesting, and it's going to be a great month of baseball for this AL East. Yeah, I can't. Uh, listen, Buck, you know, listen, five games is a decent-sized lead to begin with. The Yankees are going to play a little better eventually. I cannot see the Yankees losing this division already. You want to tell me that the Yankees aren't going to the World Series? I'll buy it. But you're going to have a tough time telling me that you that somebody thinks that the Yankees will continue this unbelievable collapse after they've just won a couple in a row and fall the division away. What's your take on that for a sec? Let me hear. Yeah, it would be the biggest collapse in history, obviously. And they've got a comfortable league going into September. But I don't think anybody expected them to cough up the 15-game league they had in July. So anything can happen in baseball. But I think right now the Blue Jays are just taking it one game at a time is what they need to do. And the one thing that John Snyder has done very effectively, he's reminded his players, control what you can control. And obviously Bo's the guy right now that's really swinging the bat well. And Teoscar's starting to heat up a little bit. Vladdy's been Vladdy. He's having another fine season. But it's not up to the standards that he had last year. But, you know, Bo hit 345 last year in September. And he led the American League in hits last year. And I think he's uh, putting on a late charge right now. What he did in that doubleheader in Baltimore yesterday was pretty special. And I expect him to continue to swing the bat the way he has lately. He's in a groove right now. He knows who he is. He likes who he is. He's a very good baseball player and loves to compete. And I think this is his time of the year. And Gosman's had a very good year for them. You know, a lot of people thought maybe last year a little bit of a mirage with him with the Giants. He pitched well in the postseason. He got that big contract with Toronto. And Robbie Ray's pitched better for Seattle. Got that big contract with Toronto. And Gosman really all year long, Buck, has been consistently good. First game yesterday, case in point. How about that for a sec? Let me hear. Yeah, Gosman has been a terrific pro. And I think he figured out what uh, – 
his issue was and what his strengths are. And he uses his splitter very effectively. He's thrown fastballs up in the zone, down in the zone, occasional sliders. But he understands that uh, he throws a lot of strikes. He doesn't walk himself into jams and gave up a home run to Santander yesterday. But that was uh, about all the damage that he surrendered. And uh, the team plays well behind him. They understand that he's going to put the ball in play. The Blue Jays' defense has been terrific. Their infield defense all match up against anybody in baseball. When you've got Espinal in there, Vladdy over the first, the left side of the infield with Chapman and Bo is really good. And I just think that Gosman has fit in very well. And, you know, you certainly can't overlook what Alec Manoa has done either. This young man is an ace. He's an ace very early in his career. And what he did on Friday night in Pittsburgh to free up the bullpen for the rest of that series was pretty impressive. And he's going to get a chance to pitch again tomorrow in Baltimore before for the off day. So uh, they're in pretty good shape with Berea's coming around a little bit. And anytime you can go into postseason with three top starters throwing the ball well, I think you're in good shape. Got a, got a chance. Last thing, Buck, 27 years ago, you and Chris Berman, and I thought it was really a, the first step of healing after the, losing the 94 World Series. But you guys are in Camden Yards. DiMaggio was there. The Clinton was there and to see Ripken break Garrick's record. That was a big night against Kirk McCaskill, I believe it was. And he, and he hit a home run, if I'm not mistaken, too, in Baltimore 27 years ago. And you were in the broadcast booth. Let's talk about that for a sec. Go ahead. Chairman and I were there, and it was a special night, obviously. Uh, you know, we had John Miller in the booth with us. President Clinton was in the booth. And, and, and when the game became official, I thought it was very fitting that Brooks Robinson was sitting between Boomer and I. And, uh, you know, as you know, we didn't talk for 22 minutes when Cal went around the field, and it was a, a special game. And I think you're right. I think that began the healing of uh, losing that series before. And uh, it was a great moment, one I'll never forget. And it's hard to believe it was 27 years ago today. And I didn't realize you guys didn't talk for 22 minutes. That's hard for Berman, so good job all the way around there. And it's great to see you healthy here today, Buck. Excellent job. Enjoy down the stretch for the Blue Jays. Thanks for coming on. All right, Chris. Good to be with you.